Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In this video, you will learn how to use the Fetch API to get data into your React components. Now we will use the Fetch API, the new Fetch API, which is built in JavaScript functionality, so we don't need any external libraries. The Fetch API is still new, so we will need some polyfills, but we'll get to it a little bit later. And if we scroll down on this page, you'll see how to make the Fetch request. We simply provide a URL, and then we can use the nice syntax with a then, then, or catch to make our request work. Okay, so instead of the empty data, we want to make sure that inside of the component did mount, we are firing the this fetch data. Here is the React cheat sheet, which explains when this event is fired and why is it the best place to put your Ajax calls. Now we'll go back to app.js and we'll simply copy and paste the URL. So have a look at the links below. There is the fetch URL random users API. Then, then we'll turn the response into JSON, response.json. Then we will take the past JSON and we will console log it. Okay, so past JSON dot results. We will console log the results of this JSON and we'll just wrap it into console log. And in case there was an error, we want to catch that as well. So after the last then, type in dot catch and we'll catch the error and we'll console log it as well. Okay, so if there will be any errors during this fetch, we will see it in the console. So this is the syntax. Firstly, we providing the URL, then we turning the response into JSON and then we consoling the results. In case there was an error, we are console logging it as well. So if we view this in a browser, that's the final demo. This one is the one we're working on. And you can see in the console, there's 50 objects, there's an array of 50 objects that we will want to turn into our state. And that's what will create our data. Now let's try to call a URL which doesn't exist. And as you can see in the browser, the page still works, we're getting to the catch, and here is the reason why the fetch call failed. And if we fetch some random URL that doesn't return anything, then we will get another error. Now let's revert back to the right URL, save the file, go back to the browser, and where you see the collection of the objects, we want to make sure that we will loop through all of them and get the right data from it, okay? So we want to save the email, save the name and location. For that, we will use the map method inside of the app.js. So let's close this, go back to VS Code, and instead of console logging the results, we will map through it. An individual object will be user, and for each of the users, we'll create a new object. Make sure you have a parenthesis and inside of it curly braces, where we're defining the new object for individual user. The name will be in a backticks, user.name.first, and then a space, user.name last. So this will be the new name we're creating from the two values we've got from the object. Then we'll create username, user login username. The other value we'll save to this object is email, simply by targeting the user.email. And the last one will be location by selecting user.location.street, comma, and then user.location.city. This will give us the final location for the user object. Then we will get all these objects, all these users, we will call them contacts, and we'll use the setState method on the app, 
and we'll override the empty array with our new contacts. And we will also turn the loading to false. Okay, this was quite a lot of typing, so let's recap. We're creating individual object for each of the users and we're setting it simply to the state as contacts and turning the loading to false. If we save the file and view it in the browser, then we'll see a, a list of contacts. Obviously we have got the value still hard coded and we've got the key issue. We need to scroll down and for each of the collapsible, we need to create and give it a key, unique key. In our case, we'll use the username. Okay, so contact.username will be our key that we originally set from the user login username. And if we view that in the browser, we don't see any errors. And if we open the state of the app, we see that there is an array with 50 contacts inside of the state. As I mentioned, the value, the name is still hard coded and we need to fix it now. Let's jump back to VS Code, scroll down to the render method and inside of the collapsible title attribute, we will need to change it to curly braces and inside of it, we will, we will type in contact.name. We can also destructure these variables and streamline or simplify the rendering of the collapsible. So let's destructure username, email, name and location. We'll change the title to name. Then we replace the email with email and the address with address. Now we save it and look at it in the browser and we don't see anything rendering. Let's check the console. We have an error parsing failed address is not defined. Okay, so let's go back and of course it should be location, not address. So there was my bad, save it. And now we should see a list of username and email addresses generated by the random API. Okay, if we refresh the page, we get another set of values. And that's exactly what we will fix in the next video. We will save the data into local storage and only load a new set of data when the data in the local storage are older than 15 minutes. Now let's quickly recap what we've done in this video. We did create this fetch call where we're calling the random user API. We're getting the response, turning it into JSON and then the past JSON, we're looping through it and creating object for individual users, grabbing the individual pieces from the API and creating our own object. And then we're saving the list of this object as our contacts in the state. Okay, at the end, we also turning the loading to false and inside of the render method, we remove the hard coded values and now we are generating and rendering the title, email and location based on the generated and returned value from the API. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in the next video. This is it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Until next time, happy coding.